it is. So I want to kind of begin the whole subject of death and children actually begins with a parents talking to their kids about the subject of death. Parents who avoid that subject in a, a child's life until they're quote unquote an adult and can learn it on their own really have done a disservice to the child because death is a part of life. And so I want to give some suggestions uh, that I have found helpful in uh, helping a child uh, deal with death by talking about it and, and including that as a part of life um, in a child's training and upbringing as a parent. So since death is a fact of life uh, and you as a parent uh, would be interested in your child growing up being well balanced, well rounded, then the subject of death and loss needs to be included in that because you're, that's part of your role and then they're going to learn how to do those things from you. So uh, oftentimes the, the key is going to be for you to explain somewhere along the way, and I'll give a couple ideas, somewhere along the way to explain the details. What is death? What does it entail? And uh, you know it's that it, that it's a part of existence, and help the child just kind of begin to even though they, it, of course we're going to talk about it being age specific, but one of the things about death um, that and even we'll and I'll even report repeat this one because it'll show up when helping a child grieve is don't lie about death. Um, or loss and that that kind of thing. It's it's really an, doing a child an injustice to do that. And so being honest is a, a very important one. But of course, when it comes to death, um, being specific is based is going to be based on the age of the child. Uh, a a four-year-old, um, you might explain it just real passively and go on, and whereby you get a a, a ten-year-old boy that wants the details. Hey, what, you mean what, ha what happens here and all that stuff. So uh, the details about death need to be age specific and, and what you teach a child along the way will increase with their age and maturity like many other subjects. But my challenge is you don't want to avoid the subject of death uh, as a part of your parenting. And give them the freedom to ask questions no matter how stupid uh, that question might be, sometimes that just helps them digest and process and understand uh, the whole concept of, of somebody dying and what does that mean and why and all those questions that come into play. Here's some suggestions. Now this comes partly from what we're covering today is partly from my own experience which has been a lot actually in children and death uh, as as well as research that I've done and conversation I've had with other people that have gone through some of these experiences. As a young boy I grew up in a very patriotic um, family-centered community in southern Iowa and our family not only was tight-knit and therefore we had a family cemetery plot. There was where most of our the naps in my family would have been buried. You add to that the patriotism and every Memorial Day everybody would go to the cemeteries and there would be flags by all the veterans in the cemetery. And so from from the time I was a small boy it was a it was a community practice. People would come back who have moved away, they would come back to our community for Memorial Day to go visit the cemetery. And so our family would do that. We might go to church on Sunday, but that weekend on Memorial Day, we'd all get in the car and go visit Grandpa and Grandma's grave. And Grandpa was a veteran, so he had a flag by his as well, and we saw other ones. So from an early age, I at least annually would go to the graveyard and got familiar with that and who was there and why and we'd discuss those people we would remember them and so death was not just a concept I actually saw the that as part of life and so whenever my grandpa died I was age six years old um, it fit into that whole spectrum that that uh, was a part of what I understood as part of life. Um, and so 
But then whenever my dad was killed in a farming accident just six, six year, uh, four years later, um, again, it wasn't a shocker. It was a shocker that he died, but, it, but as far as death, what's that? That, that wasn't a question in my, in my mind as a child because we had as a family included, that's just a process of life. Uh, and uh, of course, being in a small community, <laughs> the common gossip is every year, who passed away. Everybody knew the, the, the patriarchs of the community and they had you know, keep an up to date. So my background included understanding death even as a child in a broader perspective. So when it did hit our family very closely, like I said, uh, uh, my dad was uh, killed in an accident when I was 10 and a half, well, 11 years old. Um, that was just a part of life and it affected the way our family processed that as well. So um, let the children, and of course, I'm not talking about three-year-olds necessarily, but um, I was age six at, when I went to my, the first funeral, it was my grandpa, and uh, pretty well had an idea what was going on and it wasn't a, a, a terrible, shocking thing. Uh, another one, like I said, is take them to the, uh, take them to, to cemeteries, talk about that. And that and also another way to help your children, and you should be doing this anyway as a parent, help them deal with the subject and understand death, is for them to understand your worldview. How you view man, how you view, like we talked about in an earlier session, who, who God is, what happens, to, what's life after death like, and all that stuff, the things that you believe about that, where does someone go when they die, all those principles of worldview, you need to be teaching those to your children so when death does occur, they'll be able to fit it in somewhere. It'll, it'll make sense. It'll, it'll, they'll be, it'll, it'll be more understandable when they have a worldview to hang that event on uh, in their life. Now here's one of the challenges that uh, many parents face. As a parent, we want to protect our kids. And sometimes if we've gone through some challenging events, we, want, we don't want our kids to have to go through that. And sometimes that's not always a good thing. It's almost like try, helping a baby chick hatch. They don't usually do well. Or helping a butterfly get out of its cocoon. That butterfly will not be strong enough to survive. And so sometimes when we try to shield our kids too much from losing, the whole concept of loss, um, that whenever a major loss that nobody can control comes into play, it becomes devastating. And whereby if, there's, if, they've, if you've taught them how to uh, process loss, uh, when death comes along, it'll just be another one, maybe the biggest one ever, but it'll just be one that when it comes along, they'll be able to deal with that. So these are things to help your, prepare your children for life and yes, the loss and death uh, in their life. Now,